Hi! This video will cover taking a quiz in Connect. There are a bunch of different ways you can access quizzes in Connect, but this usually depends on the purpose of the quiz, so let's cover that first. Quizzes will exist as either formative or summative assessments. Formative assessments tests how well the stuff you've learned or are learning is forming into knowledge. It's often used to check where you're at and see if you need to revisit anything or get some extra help. A test your knowledge quiz is a pretty common form of formative assessment using the quizzes tool. It's not tied to a grade, it's just about checking where you're at. Summative assessment is more about evaluating where you are at the end of a unit of learning. And at TAFE Queensland that's primarily assessing whether you are competent or not yet competent. There are a bunch of ways we can do summative assessments in Connect, but in terms of quizzes, it's with a quiz that's connected to a grade item. Formative assessments are usually sequenced into a unit of work, so that you encounter them as a natural part of your unit progression. Summative assessments, on the other hand, are more about where you're at at the end of a unit of work. So, if they're sequenced in, they'll be at the end but you can access all your summative assessments through the assessments module in your unit, as well as through the assignments and quizzes tools in the navbar. When you go to the quizzes tool, you'll see the available quizzes, available being the operative word. Quizzes can be unlocked as you progress through your unit, either by date or as you access certain parts of the content. So you may not see all your unit's quizzes at once. For this example, I'm going to be doing a summative assessment, so I'll head to my unit's assessments module. Clicking the quiz title will take us to the summary page where we can see the details of the quiz. The quiz details are important to note, because among other info, they'll tell you when the quiz is available, how long you have to complete it, and how many attempts you have been given. When you're ready to begin the quiz, click the Start Quiz button. Quizzes can have an estimated time to complete, to give you some idea as to how long the quiz should take you. They can also have a hard time limit. Whatever time features have been applied can be found up the top of your quiz, but if your quiz has either of these, they would have been covered on the quizzes summary page. Let's move on to the questions. Let's select an answer in the first question. You'll notice that it auto-saves each time I select an answer. Of course, if I'd like to change my answer, I can pick another option, and again it'll auto-save. As you work your way through a quiz, you'll encounter a few different types of questions. You might also have noticed that this quiz has been split into multiple pages. Once you've completed all of a page's questions, use the Next Page button to jump to the next page of questions. Quizzes can contain many different styles of questions, like multiple choice, fill in the blank, matching, and many more. All of the answers are auto-saving as I go, and you can see the questions getting ticked off as the answers are auto-saved. Again, your answers will auto-save as you go, and you'll see this being checked off in the top corner. Once you reach the end, click on the Submit button. This may open a second warning panel, where you will be warned if you've overlooked any questions. I've been a little hasty in completing this quiz, and I've missed one, so I can use the link to jump back to that question. With that question answered, and my responses double-checked, I'm good to go. Again, I select the Submit Quiz button. I'll get a notice that my quiz attempt has now been submitted, marked with the time and date. In this example, the quiz has been set up to be graded instantly, so I've already received an attempt score. Not all quizzes are set up this way, some require manual marking, and, in those situations, results won't be available immediately. We can see from that score that unfortunately, I've been unsuccessful, and it's been marked unsatisfactory. We have a function in Connect called Reset Incorrect Questions Only, or RICO, which will likely be switched on in your summative quizzes. With RICO enabled, like the name suggests, you only have to redo the questions you got wrong, instead of doing the whole thing again. 
that second attempt is available back on the summary page, so when I'm ready to attempt it, I can head there. But, while that attempt is open, you should not re-attempt straight away. If you were unsuccessful in a quiz, it was for a reason. Maybe you need to check in with your teacher and talk about it. Maybe you need to go back over your notes or go back through your Connect unit and revisit that content. Like we said earlier, summative assessment is about evaluating where you are at the end of a unit of learning. If the mark you receive on your quiz indicates that you are not yet competent, then it means that you've got some gaps in your skills or knowledge, and you should work on addressing those before you make your next attempt. If it's a summative assessment, then that second attempt is also your final attempt. Seek assistance, take your time and put yourself in the best possible position to be successful before you start that next attempt. Now, there's obviously a bunch of other ways quizzes can run, particularly if they're formative assessments. So just make sure you read that summary page and reach out to your teacher if you have any questions.